Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be looking at FreeSky Receiver Redundancy. Alright, so before I kick everything off, sorry about all this, I've got a bit of a cold and yeah, it's, it's kicking my ass at the minute. Uh, but anyway, let's get on with the video. You can see on my desk I've got a couple of FreeSky receivers and we're going to be using those in this demo. Now, um, receiver redundancy is something that's been around for quite a while. Uh, you could do it with the old ACCST stuff and... I'm going to be showing you using access but the procedure is very similar and I'll go over the slight differences while I'm going through it. I'll also be using EFOS but again OpenTX the setup is basically identical it's just on a different screen so all, all things are going to be covered here. All right so first off what is receiver redundancy? Well it's quite simply having a second receiver it's not so much if a receiver physically breaks but if you have a problem with the radio system so for example you have a 3d plane that you fly about and is all over in different orientations if you just have a single receiver you have two you know, re regular diversity antennas you put them in two orientations like that if you have a redundancy receiver as well, you can add extra orientations. So you, for example, could have a second vertical because you know, that's probably the most usual position you'll be in. And then you could have one in that direction as well. So then all axes are sort of covered and you won't ever get that null spot. You'll have a strong signal all the time. Another example would be in like a carbon fiber glider or uh, moldy or something like that. Yeah, the, putting a, a receiver antenna inside a, mold, a carbon fiber glider it will basically kill your signal. You won't have anything. You have to put those antennas outside. But also, if you've got an antenna on either side, there's a chance the fuselage is still going to block a signal. So adding another set of antennas for re redundancy will give you a much better chance of maintaining a signal with something like that. But also, it, you can have it as a, another backup. What I'm going to be showing you is with 2.4 and 900. So say for some reason there's a, a problem on 2.4 one day, the 900 will kick in. With you know, more and more Wi-Fi devices, you know, this is something that could actually happen. But um, yeah, the idea is you have a signal redundancy. And using, uh, I've got an SR10 Pro here using something like that I've also got power redundancy because that ad, that receiver has two power inputs so both receivers are then protected by two batteries so what do you need to get receiver redundancy going so first of all both of your receivers need to have s bus you can have one receiver that's only got s bus out so something like an xm plus could be useful for a, a redundancy receiver because it's really small it has s bus out and it you know just does what it does um, but the other receivers, if you wanted to chain multiples, they need to also have SBUS in. You can see on the SR10 Pro on the desk, um, there are these two uh, ports up here. One is SBUS out, one is SBUS in. So that one can accept the SBUS signal. So if you've got SBUS in, you can run redundancy. The way it always used to run with the 2.4 stuff is if it had an R at the beginning, it supports redundancy. So it has an SBUS in. Obviously with R9, it's um, a bit harder to sell because the whole, all of them start with R. But yeah, so this one has SBUS out. This one has SBUS in and out. So this is going to be our master. This is going to be our slave effectively. But let's get started. Okay, so what are we going to need to do this? Well, other than the two receivers, we need a cable that just has a servo plug at each end. And obviously we need our transmitter and a way of powering up these receivers. So what I'm going to do is just power on the transmitter. And what we're going to do is go to the RF system. I should go through this. This is just a demo model. At the moment, all that's on there is just four channels. So what I can do is plug in a servo in one of these and we can see it working. So we're going to RF. Now, if you're on OpenTX, this section is on your model setup page in the model menu. So it's like literally the first page of the model menu and you go close to the bottom and you've got your receiver options. If At this stage, you probably already know how to bind. It's basically that section. Now, what I'm going to do is enable the internal module and I'm going to set it up for access 
and flex because that's what I'm using. And then I need to obviously turn on the 900 and 2.4. So we've got our internal module set up. So we're using internal antennas. I don't need to do anything. And we want to set 1 to 16 range, which should be default now in EFOS. And the first thing that we're going to do is register our receivers. Now I'm going to do the slave first. With access, obviously, you need to register first. So I'm going to put it onto register, hold down the fail safe button and add power. So when this pops up, you just press register. That's it. Registration is OK. So disconnect the power for that one, because obviously we cycle power to uh, bind. Um, so what I'm also going to do is register this one while I'm here. So again, we'll click register, hold down the fail safe button, and this should power through these pins as well. Yeah, there we go. So register. OK, so both our receivers are now registered on the transmitter. You know, obviously, you, the registration part is transmitter wide, so it doesn't really matter. But what we're going to do now is bind. You can see that one's already set up for VSR10, so I'm going to remove that. So we're starting from scratch. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bind number two first, because I'm going to use that for the slave. So what we need to do is go to bind, power up the receiver. And then when it appears, we can just choose it from the list and OK. Now what we need to do is go into the options and we want to turn off telemetry. So there we go. That's all we need to do on there. We can return out and that will have set the options on our receiver. That's it. With the uh, slave or satellite receivers, whatever you want to call them, you don't want any telemetry on there. So next up, what we're going to do is bind our master receiver. So I'll plug you in. We have our SR10, and that's it, done. We don't need to change any options on here. So you notice telemetry is on. But we, as I say, we don't need to do anything in there. So now we're all set. What we can do is plug the two together. So I'm going to go for the SBUS in on this receiver, because this is our master, and the SBUS out on this receiver which reminds me i might need to change an option on, on this particular receiver now what i should be able to do is just power up the sr10 and then we should see both of these go be green for binding so let me just check that uh channel six S bus. There we go. That's what I wanted. So there we go. That's all bound up. Let me just stick in a uh, servo and you can see that that's working. So that's working well and good. We've got our ma master and our slave. They're connected through S bus and our servo is moving. And you can see both have a green LED, which means that both are bound to that model. But how do we know the the redundancy part is actually working. Well, we can do a simple test. So what I'm actually going to do is reset that receiver. So now what I'm going to do is bind that receiver to a different model ID. So we'll just unplug the S bus because otherwise it will try and bind both receivers. Unplug the power. And we may need to re-register, but hopefully we just <clears throat> would we'll, hopefully we just get away with a bind. So we'll just power on. There we go. SR10. Bind OK. So I'm going to disconnect the battery, plug the S bus back in. And now I can power on. Now this may look like it's the same. But it's not, even though we have two bound receivers here, they're actually on different model IDs. 
So you can see we're on model ID 23, we have a green light on the SR10 Pro, meaning that that has bound, whereas the R9 has a red light, meaning it hasn't bound. You can also see up the top, on our 2.4 we have 99 dB uh, RSSI, and on our uh, 800 megahertz we have zero. So it's not getting a signal at all from the R9, but it is from the SR10. So our servo is moving, but it's only this receiver that's working. But if we switch now to model 23, what you'll see is that one is now red, that one is now green. The RSSI for the 2.4 has gone down, but you can see that the servo is working. We have a green light here, so this is our bound receiver. This is red, it doesn't have a bind, and also you can see up there that it doesn't have a bind. So you can see that the redundancy side of things is working. All we need to do just to finalize things now is again power down and we'll just set it back up as it was. So we'll go back to model 23. We will reset the SR10, go back to model 22 and just rebind the SR10. Bind OK. Plug the S bus back in. And there you can see we're both green, all's working. Still don't have an RSSI there. Of course, there's no telemetry. It's just me being stupid. Um, but yeah, we are both bound, both bound to the same model. So redundancy is working. So that's how you set it up. Now there's one other thing I just want to add. You notice that this has an S bus in and an S bus out. Well, you have three receivers here. You could potentially stick another receiver on for free receiver redundancies so for example we could have an sr10 pro then we could have something like an r8 pro which has s bus in and out so that we'd go s bus out into the r8 pro out into the sr10 pro then we have 2.4 receiver redundancy on both axes and we also have 900 megahertz receiver redundancy so you've got quite a bit of scope with this. And of course, don't forget to set up failsafe. At the moment, it's not set, but you can either do it with a receiver, so put your sticks in the position, press the buttons on the receivers, or you can set a custom, which will actually send it down to the receivers. So just before we wrap this up, I did mention that you can do this on ACCST as well. So if I just um, use a different demo model, And if we switch this over to ACCST, what you'll notice is that there's only one bind. All you need to do is keep the model ID the same. So I'm going to move it to 23 because 22 we're obviously using here. And this, of course, won't work because this is access, so it won't work. But what you do when you bind the first receivers make them your slave receivers and make sure to bind them with telemetry off. And then when you bind the master, just bind it with telemetry on. And as long as you keep this model ID here the same, it will work. You just link it up with SBUS the same as we have done here. So there you go, guys. I hope you found this video useful. I'm sure it will help save some models in bad RF situations. And yeah, it's always good to have a backup. So thank you very much guys for watching. If you did like the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and the bell icon, and that will help get this video out to more people too. And yeah, get out there while you can, while the winter is still holding back a little bit and fly your models like you stole them and have fun. See ya.